poem called Fire in the Sky, and you'll see why. Four parts in the next 30 minutes will take you on a journey from the birth of the cosmos to the opening of our consciousness. The big story, the big story that we are a part of, that we are a part of. So part one, ignite the fire in the sky. There is nothing, nothing at all but random quantum fluctuations. It's lonely, but it's perfect. Perfect, perfect for the Ur particle to come into existence. Ur particle says, I will exist. The universe says back, no you won't. I will shuck you off. I had the perfect rest state and you interrupted it. <laughs> Universes get pissed off when they're woken up, by the way. <laughs> Ur says replies to the universe, I will become an existing being. I will persist. I will be here in the next moment. To advance its cause, Ur quickly creates its double, and the double of its double, and the double of its double of its double, and they fluoresce, all these doubles, out along the golden spiral of the Fibonacci spiral sequence how the universe fluoresced into being. But there's a little wiggle on those spirals, a little introduction of something, something special wiggles, something of intelligence, of mind, something of a hand is wiggling our spirals. So the perfect Fibonacci spirals, the rails upon which these particles are moving out, gets shifted shifted by a random quantity. A random quantity. What is this random quantity? Random is the hand of God at the creation of the universe. And as random piles up and piles upon, upon itself, it throws the particles into chaos. Things start to collide. Things start to merge. The, fun, the sunflower flutters, and bam, the cosmos lights up. The cosmos lights up in the Big Bang, and there's a fire in the sky. That's how it all began, folks. Rushing outwards, the cosmos now breathes out chaos. As it inhaled order, it now breathes out chaos. It rushes out and rushes it out until it re meets the boundary, the obstruction, until it meets the banda, the rubber banda of gravitas. And that banda pulls it back into union. Gravity says, I am the great forger. You can no longer go any further. I will use my hammer and tongs. I will forge you into real things. I will create some order from that chaos. So fall in, fall in to my gravity wells. I will take you. So the particles fall in, they spiral in. They get denser, they get denser and denser that they get hot. They've never experienced hot except at their births. It's a new birth. It's a rebirth of the cosmos as stars ignite, and suddenly there are many fires in the sky. A billion years pass, and a billion more, and more particles are made from the fires in the sky. Then around one, one very special one, there were circling organic ices. These are the ices made in cosmochemistry, the beautiful structures and the telltale scriptures of something to come, something to come. The star ignites, the star brilliates the disk, the warmth melts the ice to droplets, and those droplets fall in to impregnate hopeful worlds. On rocky worlds, eager oceans mop up these droplets. Volcanics light the night, and their fires above the black ocean. The sky goes boom with the flash of meteorites coming in. 
more fires in the sky feeding our restless newborn world. The clouds, they finally part. The atmosphere clears pink. Yes, we had a pink atmosphere. Just a few miles thick. The first fresh water rain falls. It bathes the baby and the bubbling up through the parched Archean landscape feeds warming pots, stirring the ingrediating soup of life. So you got the picture? <laughs> We're about ready to fire here. Part two, feed from the fire in the sky. We are liquid crystals, soft and liquid. We form from lipid. We squirmed into existence. We took up the polymers and we produced the functions. We are soft, soft crystal. We grew, we accumulated. We accumulated at the bottom of the pool. As it was drying down, we fed, we fed on those concentrated monomers. We built new function, we dried out. We exhumated all of our trash. We rafted down the river. We found a new pool. It was just about right. The Goldilocks zone, the Goldilocks zone. We lifted, wind carried us, peeled us off. We traveled far across the island. We landed under a slab. We learned how to lick the sunlight. Then we met our brethren in the pool. We met our cistern in the stream. We struggled together, we squiggled together, we shared dream genes, we shared dreams. We were the progeno, the roots of the tree of life. For millions of years we recombined the hydrogel protocell. We mashed together, we carried the genetic underground. We created and fed in the genetic cloud. Up out of the genetic cloud rose function. We shared the functions. Earth was a pleasant place then. The asteroid impacts every day. Acid rain, but plenty of food from the sky. Interplanetary dust particles fed us. But then one day our cistern figured out how to make PAHs, those funny ringed carbon compounds. We ate the PAHs, but then we found a better use for them. They floated up to the top of our gel. They were a pigment. They screened us from the sun. But as the photons hit it, their absorption bit it, and we got energized. Whoa. We got energy for all, free for all. That was the beginning of photosynthesis, and we fed from the fire in the sky. Now we can make our own food. We don't have to wait for the particles. We can make our own. We are phototropes, and we are on our way. We are on our run. We have a planet to transform. But we have the vitality, the vitality to transform a world. And someone, someone standing on a festival stage in front of a microphone, in front of a microphone talking about us, figuring us out how we came to be, loving us for what we did. Three billion years of planetary cleansing. First the coffee-colored oceans precipitate all that iron. Then clean the atmosphere and bloom the oxygen there. Now we have a blue sky, a blue sky made of clean rain and oxygen, made by the microbial man, the mighty stromatolite, ringing all the continents. So that's the story, the story of us progeno, the soft crystal beings. But as you think about this, as you think about this, inside your brain case, your brain case, which is made of appetite, the bone of your body is made of a mineral. But inside lies the most wonderful, wondrous liquid crystal the most densely ramified matter in the cosmos, your brain, your neurons, 
is a gigantic cosmographied glorious liquid crystal machine. It's a liquid crystal machine that can see into the cosmos and it can look back on its own beginning. So think about that and as you're thinking about that, that you're making the beginning and that you're making the future and the waves go out, your intention is set and the stones are placed in front of you. So part three, light the fire in the mind. Slime climbs, slime climbs and invents lignin, which allows the new plants to reach up to the fire in the sky. Genes scream, Genes scream and the dinosaurs roar into existence. The animals are here, the animals. The great forests cover the continents, the green, the green. One day the whip-tailed creatures, the prosimians, our ancestors, alight on the limb of the great rainforest giant. Because what she sees is a glistening globule at dawn, pulling herself from the community ball, she creeps out onto the limb, seeking the sap, the sugar of this glistening globule. And as her lips purse to pull out the nutriment, she looks around, one eye back to the community, because if the community sees her taking the precious elixir, they will bust her. Sound familiar? <laughs> One eye, though, looks forward on the branch. One eye looks up, and as her mind is turning on with the glucose, it sees the stars. And she asks herself, what are these fires in the sky? Her mind is opening. Her mind is questioning. And then the rays of our fires in the sky touch her. And for a moment, her eye comes down. Her eye comes down and looks into her future and sees a pattern of squares, of colored squares. What are these things, she questions. They're flowing, but then they stop, and there's still this pattern of color. Her mind is asking, what is the mosaic that I see? And realization starts to spark the fire of knowing, the fire in the mind. Because she, what is she is watching, the trippy scale pattern. The head of the serpent is wrapping itself underneath the limb into a striking position. And if she does not realize and leap at the right moment, he will snap her ass down. So slowly, slowly and inexorably, through a trillion quests for the elixir, quests for the mind to open, for a trillion trips to the medicina, there is an encounter with the serpent. And the encounter with the serpent ends in being either snapped up or snapping to. Sound familiar? <laughs> But what happens is if she snaps too and realizes that these, these patterns are the scales of her enemy, she goes back and she creates her double and the double of her double. And those progeny go on and their minds are opening to consciousness. They can see in color with acuity. Roll the clock 60 million years forward and we have Artipithecus walking the forest floor. She can still climb, so she climbs a tree to grasp a fig and peers out on the brilliance of the advancing dry Serengeti. And there, through the mirage, is a face is presented of a weird, weird beast never before seen. But it is a weird, weird beast that is her. It is her. It is the other hominids coming. They're coming for her. What is this threat? As the fall of Eden exposes them to this new dry world, she tilts her head. She's afraid, but she's also curious. What is this face that she sees in the haze? It is the face of her future. 
And now we come to the final part, part four. This is a part that you are a part of right here, right now. And it's called Ascend to the Fire in the Sky. Ashen feet, ashen feet press their forms into the land as the family walks around the volcano, walks northward out of East Africa, walks into the face of the glaciers, walks down south and finds itself in the Alps. Villages are built, furs are worn, feet are shod, and a new era is born. And flint chips on flint, and sparks fly, and now the fire in the sky becomes the fire on the land. And hands are warmed in the Paleolithic village. The hunt is held, the story is told, and men can grow old. And some men, and some women too, the shaman, wander the land from village to village. They seek truth. They seek truth and they tell it. And in their pokes, in their pouches, the medicinal, medic, medicinal herb, the mushroom forms, they bring the beginning of the healing. But on the back end of the healing comes the revealing. The shaman dances, the tribe prances, the beat, the drum's beat is set. The hearts beat together and community opens. So walking down from the Alps, the ice man cometh. He arrives in the peninsula. The farms are set, the fishermen set forth. They set the stones, they build the beautiful temples. The Greeks have built their, built their classical world. A scratch is made in the ground. Pythagoras is tracing the round. And Plato calculates the circumference of the earth. At the lo lowest level, the atom is considered. Philosophy has arrived, married to nature, to birth science. Debate and laughter in the academy. But down the road at Eleusis, at Eleusis, the women, the hierophants, are carrying the initiation forward from the upper Paleolithic. Every year in the Telesterion Temple, they initiate a thousand people in the great mystery. They brew a brew, which is taken on the ninth day, and the light of Persephone returning from Hades fills the minds of the monkeys, and they become human beings. Human beings who will build the world, the classical world, science and the theater, the polity and the aqueduct, this is a beautiful world, this world of antiquity, until one day, the black-robed Pauline Christians, fresh off their fourth, Ni fourth Nicene Council on the road to Eleusis, meet Alaric, the Germanic heavy mover from the north, and they hire the demolition crew. They arrive at Eleusis, and they destroy the temple to the foundation. They then lick the bones of the old world, the world of initiation into the light, and they replace it with the darkness of guilt and dread. The wings spread, and instead of your right to contact the light in your lifetime, you must bow down, you must now pay taxes, and only after following all the rules in their damned book, at the end of your days, you may enter the gates of heaven. Such a deal, such a crime perpetrated on the human mind, the human soul, and not the saving of the souls, but their stealing. After this, the bones of civilization come crashing down. The aqueducts still carry the waters. The mystery schools are then replaced by churches and the churches by corporations. And this is where we find ourselves today, still following the damned book, still paying the penance until death, still waiting for the doors of paradise to open. But, but, but then in the 60s, in our lifetime, the light returns. The light comes up, not from the hate from Hades, but from a place called the Hate Ashbury. Yeah. It's a Dionysian Woo! return. Yeah. The yeah. culture cracks open. Yeah. And the great mystery walks the earth again. Yes.
are those among us who carry this forward, even to this day. You all do. So after 1,500 years in the church pews, this tradition is making its comeback. Yeah. And you all find yourselves here at lightning in a bottle, craving your own initiation and seeking your own light. And so it is. So I admonish you, I plead with you, that when you step out of this temple tent, and when you go out into the night, and your mind is alive, and you, you head for the stages, you're going through the stages of your own evolution, of your own awakening, and of your own opening. And when you hit the dance floor, or the yoga mat, or find the breath within, and you move your body, you are the Ur particle, the gel progenote. You are the whiptail prosimian and all of her offspring. You are rocking to the beat of the villagers' drums, swaying to the sonic power of Eleusis, and forging a new community built right here, right now. And when you look up at the healers, the artists, the DJs, today's shaman, today's hierophants of the temple, when you look at their light, their laser light coming through the vibration, you too can reach up, reach up, and find your own fire in the sky, your ascension, the monkey's oh, yeah. ascension. Oh yeah. It can happen right here, right oh, yeah. now, tonight. So go and get it. Go and seek it. As Terence would say, reach for it, release into it. It is, after all, your birthright. Yeah!